They want Kendrick Lamar to be the man now. They giving Kendrick Lamar the throne. And Drake is jealous. And he know, he know the game. He know how they do it. He know how they use the bots. The same thing 6 9 saying is the same thing your boy Drake saying. He know exactly how this shit go. He know how they push the artists, how they boost them up, how they create a, a false advertisement for the artists in his music. And he know that they did the same shit to him in the meat mill situation. Come on, we all know. So don't let them fool you. Don't let them fool you. But here's what I think is happening. I think you might have a situation where Drake realizes that not like us and everything around that song and this battle has forever tarnished his earning ability and his ability to make that money. This is what I think is is so significantly reduced that he's got to do everything he possibly can to get it back. Even if that means filing these claims where you're out here. I, I would never file a claim like this if I were him, unless I guess there was that much money on the line. Because from a PR perspective, my gosh, what do we think, people? Does this does this play well or does this play poorly for the boy? Let's put the wine down for a second, because at times like this, we need. That's crazy, yo. That's fucking crazy. He he tripping on that one. Drake, they they about to trip you out, Drake. Don't don't get tripped off. Don't don't let them trick you out your position, Drake. Wait, hold up. Hold up, man. I know you didn't. I know you didn't, dog. ATM in Albuquerque. Jose Nunez Ramanes told CBS affiliate KRQE he called the number on the ATM, then police, because he knew trying to keep the money meant he would have to deal with mom. I'm just on here from the family. Because you done found all that money making your mama cry. And she gotta go to work tomorrow because it is. You don't need to come to Thanksgiving. A 19-year-old out to buy his grandfather some socks came across a bag with $135,000 just sitting near Wells Fargo ATM <coughs> in Albuquerque. Jose Nunez Ramanes told CBS affiliate KRQE he called the number on the ATM, then police, because he knew trying to keep the money meant he would have to deal with mom. I'm just on here from the family. Because you have found all that money making your mama cry. And she got to go to work tomorrow because it is. Ain't that a bitch? Ain't that a motherfucker? If that ain't a motherfucker, imagine finding that money. Ain't that some shit?
If it ain't something, it's another, man. They say that's why you pay YSL lawyers the big bucks, y'all. They say this is why you pay them the big bucks. Two witnesses, Quindaria Zachary and Kenneth Copeland. Those are the two witnesses. And I've been doing this long enough. They're horrible witnesses. They're liars. They have every reason to lie. They have every motivation to lie. They are inconsistent. They tell different stories every time they talk about the things they talk about. The state knows they're horrible witnesses. But here's what happens. In closing, the state says, they're not our witnesses. We didn't choose those witnesses. Shin, they're Shannon Stillwell's friends. He chose those witnesses. That's their line. They might not use it now because I already said it, but that's their line. But let's think about that for a second. <coughs> that's not their witnesses. First of all, they, they're not the problem with the state. But that's not their witnesses. Look at this indictment. 28 names. Quindaria Zachary? See on this indictment? Nope. Kenneth Copeland, is he on this indictment? Nope. Are any of us going to really sit here and pretend that if the state was really being honest about who to charge about the events in 2015, 2014, 2015, that Kenneth Copeland wouldn't be on that indictment? Kenneth Copeland was a one-man crime wave in 2014, 2015. Yet, he's not on this indictment. Quindaria Zachary was a straw purchaser for guns. Quindaria Zachary was right in the middle, the impetus for one of the overt acts, the April 28, 2015 shooting of houses. He's right in the middle of this. And they're not on the indictment? And we're supposed to pretend that the state isn't the ones, aren't the ones that chose Kenneth Copeland? and Quindaria Zachary as their witnesses? Of course they did. Of course they did. And why did they choose them? What are the qualifications that Kenneth Copeland and Quindaria Zachary both had when it really comes down to it? They're two people that are willing to lie on others to get themselves out of trouble. That was one qualification that they had. And two, they are two people that happened to put themselves in situations, serious situations that would require them to lie on others to get themselves out of trouble. Those were their two qualifications. And the state said, sounds good. We'll sign you up. You're our witnesses. You're no longer on this indictment. Thank you. I lied on to because you know I mean I find out he he, he I can't say that I ain't, I can't say that on the phone but you know what I mean it's some shit it's some shit happened between me and him back then and it just so happened I got locked up to me speak you feel me he admitted he said I lied on thug the very same interview, he was saying all sorts of things about Doug. He, he admitted he was lying. He was making stuff up to get himself out of trouble, to get to get out of his situation. And he got caught in a recorded line saying as much. The state has these two witnesses, Quindaria Zachary and Kenneth Copeland. Those are the two witnesses. And I've been doing this long enough. They're horrible witnesses. They're liars. They have every reason to lie. They have every motivation to lie. 
They are inconsistent. They tell different stories every time they talk about the things they talk about. The state knows they're horrible witnesses. But here's what happens. In closing, the state says, they're not our witnesses. We didn't choose those witnesses. Shin, they're Shannon Stillwell's friends. He chose those witnesses. That's their line. They might not use it now because I already said it, but that's their line. But let's think about that for a second. That's not their witnesses. First of all, they, they're not the public in the state. But that's not their witnesses. Look at this indictment. 28 names. Quindaria Zachary? See on this indictment? Nope. Kenneth Copeland? Is he on this indictment? Are any of us going to really sit here and pretend that if the state was really being honest about who to charge about the events in 2015, 2014, 2015, that Kenneth Copeland wouldn't be on that indictment? Kenneth Copeland was a one-man crime wave in 2014, 2015, yet he's not on this indictment. When Darius Zachary was a straw purchaser for guns. When Darius Zachary was right in the middle, the impetus for one of the overt acts, the April 28th, 2015 shooting of houses. He's right in the middle of this. And they're not on the indictment. And we're supposed to pretend that the state isn't the ones, aren't the ones that chose Kenneth Copeland and Quindaria Zachary as their witnesses? Of course they did. Of course they did. And why did they choose them? What are the qualifications that Kenneth Copeland and Quindaria Zachary both had when it really comes down to it? There are two people that are willing to lie on others to get themselves out of trouble. That was one qualification that they had. And two, they are two people that happened to put themselves in situations, serious situations that would require them to lie on others to get themselves out of trouble. Those were their two qualifications. And the state said, sounds good. We'll sign you up. You're our witnesses. You're no longer on this indictment. That's crazy, y'all. Uh. That's crazy, man. Yeah, Co uh, Kenneth Copeland was a horrible motherfucker uh, witness, but he damn sure got rich. He the first person I ever seen get rich off of being a witness. No, no lie. Lil Woody, Lil Woody, Lil Woody is the first nigga I ever seen in my life get rich off of being a witness. He got rich off of being a My nigga just bought a Bentley. A Bentley off of being a witness. This nigga doing interviews off of being a witness. Man, I ain't going to lie, my nigga. The, the, the nigga, the, even though he snitched in the beginning, he definitely helped the defense. Uh, all that, I don't recall. <laughs> I, I'm surprised that the, the prosecution didn't charge Lil Woody. Like, for real, my nigga. They allowed him to say, I don't recall. I don't recall. I'm surprised the prosecution really didn't lock Lil Woody ass up. I ain't even going to lie to you. Beat Master. Beat Master, what up? What you got going? Hit the link, my dude. Hit hit the link, Beat Master. Chop it up with your boy. You know, we. I'm just up here chilling. What's the weather out there, man? What's good? Is it cold weather up there yet? What's the weather like? You know, I'm just up here chilling. Man, this shit crazy, man. I, yo, we, it's always something, bro. It's always something, y'all. We, we, it's always something. 
always fucking something. So a Florida mother, yeah. My my boy B Massa, B Massa, what up? Good morning, good brother. What's good with you, brother? Hey, you already know. Hold on, let me get you up on here. Let me get you up on here. Yeah, I'm on my way to the doctors, fam. On your way to the doctor? Yeah, I don't know if I told you, I fell off a roof in July. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, I know 